Okay, so we're going to start chapter 10, which is on conics. Um, and we are, the first section is on analytic geometry. So what that is, is taking um, some geometric concepts and solving them more algebraically. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about are the distance and midpoint formulas, which you should know from Algebra 1 and geometry. Um, but we want to think about how the distance formula between two points is derived using the Pythagorean theorem. So I have here on this coordinate plane two points. Um, one is at 0, 0 here that we'll call x1, y1, and the other one's up in the corner, which we'll call x2, y2. And when I want to look at the distance between these two points, what I do is I look at, um, I look at this triangle that they make here. And this here is the distance between the two y values. This is y2 minus y1. And this here, the horizontal distance, is the distance between the x values. This is x2 minus x1. So when I want to find this distance here, the blue line, that distance is, um, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I can say the horizontal uh, line there, x squared minus x1 squared plus the vertical distance, y2 minus y1 squared, equals the hypotenuse of that right triangle, which is d squared. And then to get d by itself, I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared equals the distance between the two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So we have here derived our distance formula. Um, between any two points is given by um, this equation here. So just a quick uh, couple examples. Um, find the distance between the two points 4, negative 2 and 8, 3. So I'm going to call this x1, y1, x2, y2 and just plug them into my distance formula. So I'm going to have the square root of 4 minus 8 squared plus, um, oh, I did that backwards. Hang on, let's start over. Sorry. Um, well, x2 first. So 8 minus 4. It doesn't actually matter which one you do first and second as long as you're consistent between the two. Um, but I labeled them, so it's okay. x squared minus x1 plus y2, 3 minus y1 minus negative 2 squared. So this is going to be the square root of 8 minus 4 is 4 squared is 16. Uh, negative 3 minus negative 2 is plus 5 squared is 25, which is going to be root 41, which doesn't simplify any further. So you just want to leave your answer like that. Uh, go ahead and try this next one. You should get 13, but I'd like to see you work that out on your paper. Okay, so what we want to do next is um, determine whether a quadrilateral ABCD with those following vertices is a parallelogram. So what I want to do is I want to think about a parallelogram that has these vertices and, um, and we're going to determine whether or not it is actually a parallelogram or not. So if I were to plot these points, they would look something like this, A, B, um, C, negative 2, 3, and D, negative 1, 3. Okay, so if I connect them, I can see it kind of looks like a parallelogram, um, but I, I need to prove it. So what I need to recall is what does it mean to be a parallelogram? So one, one rule that will help us out, uh, well, a couple things. We can prove opposite sides are, sides are congruent. We can prove all the opposite sides are parallel to each other. Or we can prove that one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. So if I can work with just one, one pair of sides, prove them both congruent and parallel, then that is in fact a parallelogram. So let's work with DA here and CB here. So I want to prove DA and CB are congruent and that they are parallel. So recall to show things are parallel, they need to have the same slope. And if you recall our slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're going to use that to prove those parallels. So um, 
if we're looking at the slope of dA, okay, I'm going to look at the points. Um, A is 3, 2. D is negative 1, 3. I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is going to give me 1 over negative 4. So the slope of dA is negative 4. If I want to find the distance of dA, I'm going to use the distance formula that we just used. So this is going to be um, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is the square root of 16 plus 1, which is root 17. So now I want to test the segment CB and see if I get these same results. So I'm hoping that the slope of CB is also going to be negative 1 fourth, but let's see. CB is using the points highlighted in green. I'm going to use the C as the second set, B as the first. So I'm going to have y2 minus y1, that turns into a plus 4, over x2 minus x1, and I have negative 1 fourth. So those check out, and now I'm just hoping the distance is the same as well. So plugging into the distance formula, x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. Again, that turns into a plus, plus 4. Um, this is going to give me negative 4 squared is root 16, and negative 3 plus 4 is 1 squared is 1, so I have root 17. So, voila, those um, all four check out. So I know that CDA is parallel to CB, and DA is congruent to CB, and therefore this ABCD is in fact a parallelogram. Okay, and you also recall that the midpoint formula is um, the midpoint between, between two points. So um, we're really looking at an average between the x values and an average between the y values of the endpoints of any given segment. So halfway between is, is basically the average. So we have our formula here, x1 plus x2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2. Remember that midpoint is a point, so you're always looking for an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate when you're looking for the midpoint. So, for example, find the midpoint of a segment with these endpoints, 2, 5, and negative 4, 7. This is x2, sorry, ugh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So your midpoint is going to be the average of the x's, so 2 plus negative 4 over 2. And the y's, 5 plus negative 7 over 2. This is going to give me negative 2 over 2 and negative 2 over 2, which reduces to negative 1, negative 1. So my midpoint is the point, x value, y value, negative 1, negative 1. All right, so which brings us to the final concept of analytic geometry which is placing geometric figures on a coordinate plane and using algebra to express and draw conclusions about the geometric relationships. So in these cases, the position of the figures on the plane are arbitrary, so it doesn't really matter where you put them, as long as the size and shape are preser preserved. Excuse me. Um, but generally, polygons, um, you want one vertex located at the origin. So we're going to look at an example here. Prove that the measure of the median of a trapezoid is equal to one-half the sum of the measure of the two bases. So if you recall from geometry, that is a formula. The median of a trapezoid is um, the average of the two bases. But if we want to look at that um, algebraically, we're going to think of a coordinate plane, and I'm going to draw a trapezoid with one vertex um, at the origin, 0, 0. We'll call that A. Um, we'll call this one B, C, and D. And the median is the line here that connects E and F. So we want to show that E and F are basically the midpoints of DA and CB. And to do that, I'm going to name A, B, and C, D um, with some arbitrary values. So A I'm going to have at 0, 0. 
B is going to be some distance A on the x-axis and zero distance on the y-axis. D is going to be some distance B on the x-axis and some distance C on the y-axis. And C is going to be some distance D on the x-axis and the same distance C on the y-axis that D is, because they're on the same level. So I'm looking to show here that EF, the median, is equal to half the sum of the bases, DC plus AB. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to figure out, well, what is half of DC plus AB? And then I'm going to figure out, well, what does EF equal and see if they're the same. So to do this, I'm first going to find what's the distance of DC. Um, so using just these placeholder values of letters, I can, I can still plug these into, into my distance formula. So DC is going to be um, x2, if C is my second set and D is my first set, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is going to give me d minus b squared plus 0, basically. And d minus b squared and then square rooted is just going to give me d minus b. So I'm going to do the same thing for a, b. b will be my second point, a will be my first point. So x2 minus x1 will be a minus 0 squared, plus y2 minus y1 will be 0 minus 0 squared. Um, this term obviously cancels. a squared square rooted is just a. So that is what d, c, and a, b are. And now I want to figure out, well, what are e and f going to be? So e is essentially the midpoint of um, d and a. So I can plug these values into my midpoint formula. I'm going to have my average of my x's, b plus 0 over 2, the average of my y's, c plus 0 over 2, which is basically b over 2, c over 2. f, same idea, is difference of, or the sum of my x's, d plus a over 2, and my y's, c plus 0 over 2. So that is the point d plus a over 2 and c over 2. Okay, so I want to then find the distance of EF. Okay, so it's going to get a little messy in here, but we're going to still just plug everything in. Um, so E will be my, well, let's see, F will be my second value. So this will be X2, Y2, X1, Y1. Okay, so X2 is going to be D plus A over 2 minus x1 b over 2 squared plus um, y2 c over 2 minus y1 c over 2 squared. So this is obviously going to give me 0 here so I can cancel that out. Um, and then I'm going to have d plus a minus b over 2 squared and then square rooted which is just going to give me d plus a minus b over 2. So the last thing to do is to uh, check out this original formula. So EF is D plus A minus B over 2. And then I want to see, is that 1 half of DC plus AB? So DC is D minus B plus AB is plus A. Okay. If I work just with the right-hand side, you can see this is D minus B plus A over 2, which matches the right-hand side. So I have shown algebraically that uh, the median of a trapezoid is equal to one half of the sum of the two bases. So that is um, an intro to analytic geometry. So we'll do some more practice with that in class tomorrow and move on with the chapter. All right, have a great night.